Young and the Restless fans, hopefully you're having a magnificent Monday. We got a new week of drama in Genoa City, the second week of May sweeps. And you know what? Yeah, it gets crazier day by day. I'm going to give you a few highlights and then we'll unpack this episode. First, we see Phyllis and Nick discuss Summer. We also see Victor telling Jordan to drink herself to death. And Diane is furious, hotter than fish grease at Jack. So without any further ado, let's unpack this drama in Genoa City from May 6th. First up, we find Nick surprised to see his old man Victor back at the ranch. Look like Nikki is settling into rehab, but Victor's not too thrilled about it. Why? Well, he's still fuming over what Jack did, claiming he almost unalived Nikki. Uh, I think it was the other way around. Uh, Jack almost unalived himself. Now, Nick is understandably confused, so Victor spills the tea about finding Nikki with Jack after he collapsed from his little stunt. However, after explaining everything, Nick was like, well, from where I see it, Jack un almost unaliving himself to shock Nikki into seeing what that looks like on her. And now she's in rehab. I think it's not the fact that Jack tried to do something bad to her. But doing something to himself got her to see the light. However, Victor wants to put all of the blame on Jack. But uh, yeah, you know what, Victor? I think you need to take some accountability over these last seven months yourself as well. Speaking of Jack, meanwhile, over at the Abbott Estate, Jack got some splaining to do to his wife, Diane. With that whole risky move to snap Nikki out of her downward spiral involving those hardcore tactics, almost uh, taking his own life. Yeah, Diane was hotter than fish grease. She's not having it, rightfully so. But Jack insists that this is a one-time thing for the greater good. And she's like, how do I know you don't have any pills on your pocket right now? And Jack is looking at her like, are you serious right now? Uh, Jack, yeah, she's serious right now. You threw your sobriety off off and i mean she said you didn't think about nobody but yourself and you did all of this to save your ex what about me what about kyle and he had to think about that and of course he's begging and pleading but yeah you talk about a marriage shakeup. i'm wondering even though it seems like they kind of rectified the situation with the hug what's going to happen with these two later on Phyllis now runs into her daughter over at the GCAC in the foyer and asks how she's doing. Now, Summer is filling off. Now, her mom offers her whatever she needs and tells her how proud she is of her bravery. Yeah, but Summer isn't feeling so brave. She slept with Harrison and kept waking up to see if he was okay. Now, they keep reassuring Harrison, but she's sure that's not enough. She's determined to get professional help. Now, her mom tells her to get someone warm and kind. And guess who shows up? Sharon. Now, the three of them get a table. Phyllis stirs her coffee as Sharon and Summer talk about all about Jordan did to Harrison. Now, when Phyllis says, Jordan is sick. Sharon suggests, yeah, just rein it in, okay? Now, Summer says they all want what's best for her son, and Sharon gives Summer the number to a therapist. Now, after Summer runs off to make a phone call, Phyllis tells Sharon that she's very good at being calm. Awkwardly, Sharon suggests that she can recommend someone for her, too. Now, they talk about her worries for Summer, and Sharon says that she seems to have turned out to be a great mom. Phyllis says Mariah seems like a great mom, too. More awkward moments, and even after that, Sharon was like, yeah, I think I gotta run. Oh, where? To your tech empire that I didn't get a job at? Now, Sharon takes off. Summer returns and said that she thinks the doctor will work and she will never give up on Harrison. Phyllis calls Nick and he shows up. They discuss how their daughter is processing everything. Now, he's sure it may be a crash landing back into normal life. She suggests they keep their eyes on her and he asks if she's okay. She'd be happier if she seen Jordan take a last breath on her way to hell, according to Phyllis. Now, he thinks it's probably best that she keeps that to herself. Now, they order drinks and remember when Patty went after Summer and put her in a coma. 
Now, Nick points out that they got her back. Phyllis recalls that she has such a hard time bouncing back. He reminds her that she got their daughter through it. Now, Summer remembers so little of that time, and it might be the same for Harrison. And Phyllis knows it's mean, but she wishes that she could have taken Jordan to hell herself. She then thanks Nick for always having her back and getting her. Supergirl is a super mom. We did good, she says, and of course, she's tearing up. Kyle now runs into Sharon at Crimson Lights and she tells him that she set Summer up with the therapist. Now she reminds him he needs to take care of himself too. He says the ordeal was the worst thing he's ever experienced. Now she urges him to hold on to saving Harrison. He's young, he's resilient, and guess who wanders in? Summer thanking Sharon for her help earlier. She tells them not to be afraid for ask for more if they need it. Now, after she walks out, Summer anxiously asks who was watching their son and then tells him what the therapist said. Now, she hopes that he won't have to fight her on her demand that she wants, which is their son, not to be anywhere near Claire, at least for the time being. She's an obvious reminder of what happened. Now, he suggests their son will feel better by seeing Claire, and it should be fine. Summer insists they need to create boundaries but he worries that she's going to an extreme she can't see why he's not putting the bond with their child above anything else now he points out that claire is part of the family and keeping them separate is not realistic and of course she is not happy summer says that she panics every time she sees claire and that should be enough okay if you panic when you see Claire, I think maybe you need to talk to somebody about that because look like she might be around for a while, Summer. And then she goes on about how they almost lost her son and she never wants to see or hear about Claire ever again. And then finally, just when you thought things couldn't get crazier, Victor pays a chilling visit to Jordan down in the wine cellar dungeon. And he is not pulling any punches, offering her a one-way ticket to Boozville. Look like Jordan's in for a rough ride, courtesy of the one and only Victor Newman. Everything that she done to his wife, putting that IV in her arm full of alcohol, now he wants her to croak. Yeah, croak, meaning a permanent sleep by drinking herself to death. So the question is, what is she going to do? She was begging to get out of that little prison of his. She want to actually go to actual prison or take any other deal on the table. Victor is like, nope, not going to happen. So we got to stay tuned to see what happens next. Okay, so there you have it. Let's get the conversation started down in the comment section. What did you think about the conversation between Nick and Phyllis? How they coming together to support their daughter? We also see Victor telling Jordan to drink herself until she croak. And is she going to do it? Good question. And then Diane is hotter than fish grease, furious at Jack, as she should be, as he almost unalived himself for his ex let me know your thoughts also make sure that you check out the bold and the beautiful recap for today as well as oh yeah we begin the second week of may sweeps as we see deacon and finn welcome sheila back with their open arms convinced that she deserved a second chance make sure you like comment and subscribe turn on your notifications so you're notified every time a video is posted and until the next one we'll see you all soon bye guys